I think we are live. There is the ticker. And uh, I want to welcome everyone tonight. We have a Resellers After Dark interview special. It's been a while since I've done one of these. It's been actually a long while since I've done one of these. And uh, we have a very special guest for you tonight. We got Jimmy from Old School Flips. And I'm going to leave his... Yep, oh, there he is. And, and I totally forgot to turn the volume down on the other thing over there. There we go. Um, so yeah, old school, uh, flips, Jimmy is here and he is going to do the 20 question interview. Hey, test. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I, I really, I really enjoy, um, Jimmy's channel and I'm going to leave a link in the chat room and it's also a link in the description. Uh, he's getting close to a thousand subscribers and I think you need to get to that to get monetized. Are you monetized yet? I'm not. Yeah, it's a thousand, and I'm 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 at like three thousand hours, so I'm about a thousand hours short and uh, uh, two hundred subscribers. Yeah. Yeah, totally. We got Land Shark Picker in the house. There's another OG right there. Crazy. Uh, Tester C. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> he, he's old school, man. He's awesome. Uh, so Jimmy, thank you for uh, coming on the show. I've been wanting to interview you for a very long time. I feel like your channel is definitely a fun channel for me because I enjoy collectibles and cards and, and video games and stuff. And that's like, it seems like that's your bread and butter stuff. So yeah. Jimmy, do you want to give uh, the audience that, that might not know your channel, like kind of a brief kind of description of uh, what your channel is all about? All right. Yeah. So um, my name is Jimmy, uh, old school flips. Uh, I've been selling on eBay for two, just over two years now. I've been full time since February of 2019. Um, oh, Hey, I'm back. So um, I, was trying so, to push, I was trying to be fancy, sure. the fancy producer, and it totally. <laughs> I do that. It's all, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm just like y'all push the wrong button all the time. Um, so I, I love selling toys and video games, stuff that I grew up with, and stuff that I have a 19 year old and a 16 year old boy. So I was really involved in the kind of toys they played with, and the, you know, I would play toys with them and play video games with them. So I sell a lot of that kind of stuff that my kids actually played with, and. Um, the games that they played, so I know a lot about that stuff. Um, and collectibles, I'm always looking for new collectibles. So when I first started, I did the basic electronics and just learning how to sell my own stuff. But then I found out, like, hey, toys, collectibles, video games, the stuff that I played with and the stuff that my kids played with sells really good on eBay. So I, I went deep into that. And um, so now I try to I, I, I share what I sold and some of the knowledge that I have. I'm trying to share it. I'm learning the YouTube side of it and, and creating videos. Um, and I'm having fun with it. I'm, I'm trying to, as I grow my channel, just have more and more fun with it, add little things that make it pop and fun and make it an enjoyable video. And hopefully you learn something and find things that you can sell yourself on eBay. Absolutely. Jimmy, look, I figured it out. See, there we go. I can now you push it. you. I can push I'll myself. <laughs> I know that's it's the you other way. My, you can do my swoosh sound effect. <laughs> You are, you are right because um, I've actually been uh, lurking on your channel for probably about a year, and I remember when you first started doing videos. Now, by the way, are those videos done in your basement or an attic, or what's the deal there? I'm in a I'm in my basement. Yeah, I yeah. Joke that my wife locks me down here, and I have nothing better to do than make YouTube. I will say you're very lucky um, because a lot of resellers don't have that much space to kind of have inventory yeah. and stuff. Like for me, I have two storage lockers. And, you know, for me, I don't have a ton of space. So it's actually really cool that you have like all that area to kind yeah. of have inventory, have a place to set up your photography, have a place to ship all your boxes and everything. Um, so I've been watching your channel for probably about a year now, or probably even more than that. Um, and I remember like when you first started, you'd be, you'd have these, you know, like handheld, you'd go through what you're selling. But I see now that you've kind of, I remember the first uh, video that you did that had like graphics and yeah. you had some kind of like weird, like glitching uh, like graphic yeah. and i was like dude this guy's onto something do you want to talk a little bit about how you evolved from like just kind of doing just regular videos to actually adding some graphics to your videos yeah for sure so uh initially i started off i was actually working in my master bedroom because i didn't have the basement so i i shot the videos in my bedroom and um i kept all the all the inventory was in the garage so i was like i'm not gonna walk down a couple flights of stairs to go pull orders and and record it so i was like i'm just gonna bring everything upstairs and then I'll record it right here, you know, hold up what I sold. Well, then, um, so I had a roommate living in my basement. They moved out. So I got the basement. I was like, all right, we're doing this. We're turning this into the, the you know, the eBay slash YouTube cave. 
Um, so it really helped me grow my eBay business. But at the same time, I was like, okay, I can do different things with videos now. Um, I actually uh, decided, you know, I got the, I got a better computer because I was like, I can do more video stuff. And I started watching a lot of YouTube channels on how to do B-roll, how to do some fun edits just to make the videos fun. Um, and the main thing I did find out is it's actually a lot of work. Like that edit that you talked about, that was a lot of work. I probably spent three, four hours just messing with that video, trying to get it, um, you know, dialed in and how I wanted it. Um, so yeah, that was that was a lot of work, and so that's why I've kind of, you know, I had to scale back some of the stuff I'm doing on YouTube because I want to grow my eBay. It's still the number one priority is eBay. It's what pays my bills because I'm full time. Um, but I'm, you know, I I found I'm finding ways to try to still have fun with it, add little sound effects, little pop ups. And, you know, as I grow and maybe I get one of my sons to help me or something, then we might see some of the funner edits and some of the bigger edits come back. But right now, um, I still have, you know, like I said, I, I have the basement. I organize my inventory. That was a big part of it. If you watch my videos now, I can. it's not hard for me to find stuff anymore. So that was a big part of it, too. My wife helped me with that. So now I have all my shelves labeled. Every piece of inventory is you know, labeled and which shelf it's on. So it doesn't take me a long time to find stuff. So all that stuff combined um, really helped me get to the point where I'm at right now with my videos and my eBay store. Gotcha. Very awesome. We've got to give a couple shout outs to the chat room. Uh, Landshark Picker is in the house. Uh, Dan, the answer man. I think I've seen a, a video with you and Dan yeah. uh, doing like a really good a, one. Yeah. So I've seen Dan, the answer man. Does he have a channel? Uh, he doesn't. He's not a reseller. He he has a channel. Um, he just does like he made some videos of his vacation and stuff like that. Gotcha. Um, but he's definitely involved in the community. He's he, he's a good friend of the community, and he he definitely loves likes to talk reselling. He's just not a reseller himself. That's so funny. Uh, yeah. We also got a toy attic. And by the way, a fun fact: toy attic is literally the only person that has been on youtube that has been in the shop so uh huge oh, shout wow. out to toy Addict. she actually cool. left me a a note on my door and i thought that was like really really <laughs> cool for for her so a huge shout out to toy Addict. we also got girl hustle in the house hello welcome uh, i was telling jimmy before the show this is the first time i actually like writ written down questions so like let's try <laughs> to get jimmy do you do you have a certain amount of time uh like do you have something no. to do tonight okay good no i'm not I'm yeah. a reseller. I'm a full-time reseller. So. Oh, good, because we're scheduled I'm for my awesome. Because we're, we're we're scheduled for an hour, and I, and I think we might go a little over that. So, uh, cool. very good, very good. Okay, so number one, number one question. Let's get this all professional and ready to go here. All right. I uh, really appreciate everyone. Oh, by the way, if anyone's in the chat, definitely go down there, click the like button, and share this video with your Facebook well, groups go, and something. I'm go quick like real quick. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, Jimmy, when did you first start reselling? So I'll kind of, I started reselling myself July of 2018. Um, oh my God, you got an first, exact date. <laughs> no, because I was working for a company selling, you know how I know? Because my company sent me to the eBay open to learn more about eBay because I was selling for my company on eBay. And all I met at the eBay opens re was resellers. I didn't learn anything for a company selling on eBay. I learned how to become a reseller at the eBay Open. Kind of feel bad for my company, just a little. Wait, bit. wait, 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 wait! Stop the presses, folks! Wait, yeah, wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait! So you're telling me you started reselling in 2018? Yeah. Oh my goodness, you're doing like a really an amazing job, man, for sure. From just what I've seen in your videos, for only wow. being doing this for two years. I appreciate it. So, yeah. So my company sent me to the yeah. So, but I had a heads up because I was selling for a company before I became a reseller. I didn't really know about reselling. I went to the eBay open and I met, I made, I'm a really good friend there and he taught me about reselling and that's what I was like. And I learned more about eBay, but when I got back, I was like, man, you can do this as a, you know, a career. And so I, I started I, that I got home in July after the eBay open and I started my store right away and I started selling some, cause I used to be a mechanic. So I started selling some of my old tools on eBay and I was like, wow, this stuff's selling really fast and for good money. And that's how I, you know, like everybody says, start selling stuff out of your house. That's exactly what I did. It was my old tools, some of the old board games I had and some of my kids toys. Um, yeah, old toys. And that's how I started. And um, it was crazy how fast it, 
uh, by February of 2019, I was full time. So yeah, that's 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 insane. I will tell you a real quick story. Uh, I went to an eBay event a couple years ago, and it was funny how I did the same thing where I learned way more from the people that were in attendance than yep. the eBay people. As a matter of fact, they broke us up into groups, and the and we were schooling the eBay people, which is like right. the most ironic <laughs> thing I can tell you because the people that were there literally knew way more people that actually got paid as an, as an eBay employee, which I thought was like so yeah. crazy. Uh, so I will say, true. yeah, I know. And I will say one thing though, that I got from that event. And this is only literally one thing I really got from that event was that um, item specifics are really important moving forward. So we'll see, we're seeing a lot of that. Uh, so, you, so you said uh, you sell, you do, you do this full time now. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Um, how was, I mean, okay. So like, did you have any, uh, you said you were, you were, you were doing eBay stuff for another company yep. and then, and then how did that, like, how did you transition from going, doing that to doing this for yourself? Right. So let's so, so I did work. So I, I was a mechanic for years. I won't go into a lot of stories, physical reasons and medical reasons. I had to retire as a mechanic. I was told by my doctors and I went, so I was like, well, what do I do now? So I took a job customer service for, as a mechanic on the phone. Um, and then the company I worked for, they were like, well, hey, we, so long story short, they were like, our e-commerce guy just walked out on us. We need somebody to run our eBay and Amazon. You want to give it a try? And I was like, sure, fat finger mechanic. I'll give it a try. <laughs> um, and I blew away what the e-commerce guy, like in my first year selling for them, it was selling lawn equipment, like lawn mowers, stuff like that. I did 1.1 million in gross sales the first year, my first full year selling for them. Um, so I, they were like, "This guy is way better than the guy who, that had a degree. Let's keep him. Let's let's uh, let's have him run it." So I was running it, um, and that's when they sent me to the eBay Open. And you know, I was doing all everything. I was coordinating the shipping for that company. I was listing coming up with the pricing, everything. The only thing I didn't do was the pictures. They had a photographer that actually did the pictures for us. So that was nice. Um, but it, when I went to the eBay open and I learned I can do this myself, I already had everything dialed in. I knew how to do the customer service. I knew how to handle all the pricing. I knew how to, you know, handle all the HUD and overview on eBay. So I really had a, a leg up, if you will, when I went full time on my own. I'm going to call it. No, that's all good. I mean, that's you're lucky they had someone actually do the photos. That's actually cool. So, were you saying they were selling auto parts, or what did they sell one million dollars worth of stuff? What was it, it was so it was um their biggest item. It was it was lawn equipment. Um, oh, so that's the right. Biggest thing they sold was log splitters, and that was the that was the thing that blew my mind. Is like wow, people will buy something that has to be delivered on a big trailer. They will pay fifteen hundred dollars for some online and have it, you know, delivered from Colorado to, you know, upstate New York, and there and people do this. Like I, it blew my mind that people were spending that kind of money for something that is being shipped across the country on a big, you know, in, in a big truck, uh, LTL. Um, it was, so it blew my mind knowing to find that out. I didn't know that existed, but yeah, they sold uh, log splitters, lawn mowers. Um, chainsaws and basically any lawn equipment you can imagine, um, wood chippers, stuff like that. So, gotcha. And that sounds like you know, good business. I know that I've I've bought my fair share of that kind of stuff in the last yeah, couple yeah. Of years, like like hedge trip, like you know, electric hedge trimmers and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Exactly. So, that's a, that's a big business. You know, you can go on eBay every day to the daily deals and see like there's tons of that kind of stuff. So, I can see selling you know, one point a million. Um, have you ever had any other jobs in the past uh, that you want to talk about? Like um, you said, you're so a mechanic, I was, right? Yeah, I was, I was a heavy duty diesel mechanic for Cisco Foods um, here in Denver, which is a main, a big distributor of foods. Um, the main thing I worked on was refrigerators for them. So, uh, you know, you see a trailer going down the road, and if it's filled with food, it's got a refrigerator on the front of it that is diesel engine powered. Um, so I worked on those refrigerators, which was basically a diesel engine and a, a, air, a refrigerator compressor powered by it. So um, that's the main thing I worked on. But I also worked on the rest of the trailer as well. I did that for about 10 years. Before that, I was a printer. I printed. My first career was printing. 
and then everybody went um, paper uh, paperless, and that that went all downhill for a while. <laughs> right. That's when I that's when I became a mechanic. Um, and then, uh, you know, I don't, you know, I had a couple. I had three hernias in one year, and the doctors were like, "Nope, no more. Oh, you can't man. lift anymore. You can't be a mechanic anymore." So that's when everything changed for me. Gotcha. Um, how has your past jobs? impacted your current job with reselling has it has you got any spillover like you know you, you're familiar with parts and things how has that affected your current situation um obviously the one i just went over was the biggest one because i i handled ebay stuff but being a mechanic like and i know you know this chris like re being a reseller and selling online does take a different kind of work ethic and being a mechanic taught me that work ethic um I, you know, I was never the fastest mechanic. I was never the, you know, I never blew through stuff and I was never the fastest mechanic, but I, I stayed busy at all times, the entire 10, eight, 10 hour shift. I worked, I stayed busy all day. I always had, you know, I was always working on something and that work ethic really has helped me out. You know, I mean, let's just be honest. We, I see a lot of resellers that they don't have that ethic and they, and they, they do struggle from time to time making sure that they're listing and staying busy where me, well, I'm down here every single day working all day trying to list. I'm doing something. I'm either sourcing listing. So to me, that work ethic has really helped me out. Yeah. And I could see that in your videos and, and you, you are right. It does, uh, you know, for the, for the most part, I would say resellers are, are hustlers. We have to be, yep. that's has to be the nature. I mean, you can't rest on your laurels. That's one of the things that I've learned is, you know, you have a great week and then you say, Oh, I'm going to take a couple of days off. But that, that couple of days could be like the algorithm could change or something can happen. I want to give a couple of shout outs uh, in the chat. We got 1987 Ventures LLC. How you doing? We got Nikki T. Wheeler in the house. Nikki T. Yeah. Uh, up, tell the, yeah. Tell the Rev we said hello. Hope you guys are doing well. Nikki T. is awesome. Uh, definitely check out her and Rev's channel. There, there's a, uh, they're probably going to be the next interview I have to do for sure. I'm not, like I said, we've talked about this before. I'm like, I'm not too keen on interviews, but I, you know, I want to pick the brains of some uh, really fascinating resellers for sure. Okay. So um, let's get, let's, let's talk about uh, so the, some of the stuff you sell, like what in your current uh, eBay sales, like maybe this year, um, what do you sell the most of? Would you say? Definitely action figures and toys. Um, I'm always looking for, you know, at first I didn't sell toys. It's funny. I, it was a YouTube video that inspired me to start selling toys because I saw, man, they're buying all the toys up. And so that's when I learned, like, and so I started buying toys. I buy grab bags from the thrift stores with toys in them. Um, and so toys is probably the number one thing I sell because I buy, I also look for collections now. Like I'll be on Facebook Marketplace and I always find people selling like their Power Ranger action figure collection or star wars collections i've bought multiple star wars collect toy collections um so it's mainly action figure toys whether it be new in the package or loose figures because i'm sure yeah i know you know in a lot chris there's so many loose action figures that are worth so much more money than i could ever have imagined and i'm learning as i go but like you'll find this action figure loose at a, at a yard sale like, this is a 40 dollar action figure you know what i mean so um, it's definitely toys, action figures, number one for sure. Gotcha. I totally forgot I can do this fun little thing. Nikki T. Wheeler says, Jimmy has been killing it on eBay. Yeah, you have your uh, your big hitters. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'd call it, like the big hitters kind of portion of your show. Yeah. And, and I, and I, and I, when I saw that, when I first, when I saw the first time that you did that, I was like, I got to tell Jimmy, he's got to keep going with that because I think that's a really fun part of your videos is like big hitter alert. And you're like, Oh, yeah. I, I, I can't wait to see what this is. So I, for those that don't know, actually, you know what, Jimmy, why don't you explain what the big hitters on your channel is about? All right. So I've, I've early on in my, I've mentioned it like in just amongst me and my wife, I like, Oh, we sold another big hitter. Like, you know, something that we sold. So I kind of look for adult. I used to be like high dollar stuff, stuff that I didn't spend a lot on. And then it sold for a good dollar amount. So I would, I'd be like, hey, we sold this DVD combo for 150 That's big. We sold a big hitter. So I'd always, you know, I told my wife all the time, we sold another big hitter. Like that's how she knew when we sold something that was valuable or something that sold for a good dollar amount. I'd, I'd just be like, hey, we sold another big hitter. 
So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it in my videos. Like, I'm going to try to make, like, this little animated thing with a sound effect and just start using Big Hitter in my videos, see if it catches on, see if it's, like, a catchy thing. Because my goal is to make the videos fun. Like, I want to have... I want to have fun making them and I want people to have fun watching them. So if you, so a big hitter or something that, so I kind of lowered the bar on it. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I look for 40 bucks or higher. If it's sold for more than $40, I usually call it a big hitter. Or if it's something that I bought for a dollar and sold, sells for like 35, 40, I call it a big hitter. So um, that's what I'm doing with that. I'm having, and when I, when I make a video and I'm like, I look forward to going and pulling the big hitters off my shelf now. Like I'm going to, I get to say it and I get to do the little graphics. So yeah, that's where it all started. My wife, um, is she, she helped me come up with the idea. You know, she's like, you should use that in your videos. It's a good idea. So. It's a, it's a great idea. And I will say I, I spent a good amount of my day to day kind of looking at your channel uh -huh. and that's kind of one of the fun things I like to do is when I ever have a, an interview, I like to go and dig a little deeper than I normally would in someone's channel. And I could see like the evolution of your thumbnails, how, you know, they were one way and then you could see where, um, right you're you're evolving where you're trying new things you're seeing what works and now you're you're you have some pretty good thumbnails i will say the 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 light blue font stay with that because it's really it really pops and like i can i can really see it what's going on you have big fonts yeah, so because yeah. like one of the things that people might not know if you're doing a youtube channel is sometimes the thumbnails are everything to catch someone's eye right. and i will say jimmy your current uh thumbnails with the blue fonts those are really yeah. good and, and you should definitely keep doing those Thanks. um yeah so uh enough with the softball questions you ready for some hardball questions <laughs> oh boy <laughs> yeah just kidding i don't have i don't really have that many <laughs> I like, can we, no <laughs> fastballs yet no fastballs <laughs> <laughs> so uh here actually here's a curveball question for you Right. What item? What items don't you like to list? Clothes. I do not like to sell. I I used to sell clothes a lot early on. Um, I've stepped way back from. I used to have a lot of clothes listed. I've stepped way back from that. I now only look for vintage, rare clothes. I used to do like the name brand stuff. I used to go look for the bread and butter name brand, Patagonia. You know, cool, all that stuff. And I used to spend hours in the thrift store looking for it, and I used to spend hours listing it, measuring it, and all that stuff. Um, so I've stepped way back from that. I still don't like doing I have a pile of clothes over here that are more vintage, rare stuff that I still need to list. It's behind the pile of toys and fun stuff. So it's definitely my least favorite. Now, it's funny because I actually enjoy listing jackets and like a like a vintage starter jacket with a cool graphic on it. That's the stuff I still enjoy listing when it comes to clothes, but clothes for the most part are definitely, not even for the most part, they're definitely like bottom of the list. I, I feel the same way and I concur so much so where my, my mannequins, <laughs> they don't even like see any action to be honest. <laughs> Right. We uh we sent we send a lot of our higher end clothes to the real real which is a consignment we basically okay, box yeah. it up and we send it to them and and that usually goes, um I will tell you a horror story when it comes to me selling clothes um I would I, I went to like Goodwills and a bunch of places for like three years and I'd buy graphic tees like really nice ones and I just put them in a storage I put them in a tote right a bin a plastic bin and I would just leave them and I'd just buy them and put them in it and I'm like one day I'm just gonna list these all I had like five I had like 500 shirts and like I don't know nine bins or something I left them in in a way where the window was hitting the side like the sun was hitting the um, side of them and they all got sun bleached um, on one side <laughs> like because no. I was I was like, okay, I'm going to start pulling these out because there's like really good shirts and they're really good graphic tees, right? And yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm going to sell these now. And I and I, and I, and I went to go take my first photo. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Literally like half the shirts like bleached from the side. It's tie-dye-ish. Yeah, exactly. So, so here's a pro tip for anyone. Do not leave oh, your man. clothes in a clear tote by the window because – you would, I literally, I, I, uh, I'm going to do a video on that one day and I'll tag you for when I'll show you like, look at this, this is what it, cause I just put it in the garage. I'm like, I can't oh, deal man. with this. There's that, like, that, that is a true, I mean, resellers have nightmares and stuff like that. So that is a true nightmare <laughs> story. I want to say real quick, my wife is in the chat. Sonia, come on. Hey, Sonia. There she you. is right She's there. To say hi. Pokey world. That's Tommy. I know him too. What's up, Tommy. He, he, a good friend and follower of my channel or 
subscribe to my channel. Really. Actually, we're going to talk about Pokemon cards down the road. I do have that in here. So we're going to touch right. on that because that's one of the things that you've been selling a lot of. Um, what other platforms do you sell on? If you Do you have all your eggs in one basket as far as eBay? Yeah. Or, or, okay. <laughs> do you want to talk um, about that at all? Yeah. I mean, the main thing I, I try, I've tried Amazon. I did some FBA and some, some fulfilled by Amazon and fulfilled by merchant with Amazon. The, and I wanted to go, I was going to try the retail arbitrage thing, you know, where you go buy clearance stuff and then you send in the M and I found out really quick. If I had to do that for a, and I get it. A lot of people like it and they have fun with it and I'm happy they do. If that was what I had to do in this, that was reselling. I would go find a job before I did <laughs> retail arbitrage and FBA. And stuff. I do not like sourcing that way. It's not fun at all. I'm happy with estate sales, yard sales, thrift stores, and taking my time and finding those one-off items and selling them on eBay. I have done Mercari, and I had some success. It's just eBay keeps me so busy. I mean. Gotcha. I was just wondering, because I do all that stuff. I mean, I would say out of everything, Macari is, if you're not using Macari, you should probably just put it, maybe like, maybe some things that aren't selling. This is my advice if anyone wants to take I it. Yeah, um, if you have some stuff that's like been sitting around, like toys or video games, definitely put them on Macari. Um, so I was thinking about because I have a shelf full of video games over here, and yes. they're not moving as fast as I would like on eBay. I'm wondering if Macari would help that. Now I would, I would, I wouldn't like just put like the ten dollar or under ones, but I would definitely put some of like the twenty dollar ones, the okay. you know twenty dollars and up, just so you're not wasting your time, because right. you you've been doing this long enough where you understand like time is money, and you don't want to spend your time listing a bunch of five dollar games that is going to profit you like nothing. So yeah. when it comes to Macari, definitely because it's free. I mean, other than the you know the fee that you need to pay. And all that kind of stuff. And uh, I've been doing Macari for about a year and a half. And I, I've, I've thought like, sh I don't know if I should make Macari videos because I've, I have enough experience where I feel no, like. you should because a lot I, of people, you should. Sorry. Okay. Well, that's good. No, no, no. That's good to know. Um, do you, do you go to estate sales? I love, so it's become my favorite now. Early on when I, because I was like, to see my own progression through my eyes, like I used to struggle with estate sales. I used to struggle to find stuff. And now I know I was just missing stuff. Like I was missing so much, especially collectibles. And, you know, back when I, you know, I, I would joke with Dan the Answer Man the other day when I, when we were like three weeks ago, I was at his house and I joked with him. I was like, and you know, I, I don't mean to be offensive in any way, but I was like, old people buy stuff and then they don't open it. <laughs> and then I, now I'm finding it, you know, I'm finding it at estate sales. I'm finding so much stuff. Like I literally just listed. Microsoft Excel from 1988, brand new in the pack. Whoa. Open. I have it sitting right here. I'll I'll pick it up. Like, yeah, I will say like 15 pounds though. It's crazy. Old software. It's, I love old sealed. Found this out on the state sale. Brand oh, new, goodness. still sealed. Never. 1988. Did you like, have you looked it up and found any comps or anything? There, uh, there. I found a used one. I'm not going off of that though. I have, uh, you know what? Let me write that down. You said it was Microsoft Excel. Yeah. From what year? Eighty-eight. Yeah, nineteen eight. Two point one. Two point one. Because I, I have, uh, I have Worth Point. Okay. Yeah. Let me know. I mean, I, I actually it's listed, it's listed really high. <laughs> I hate to kind of sidetrack the show, but I think I can actually pull that up now, and we can share that with the yeah, audience. So I use worth point and I pay twenty dollars a month, and I honestly think it's worth every penny. And I know a lot of people don't want to. Um, pay for worth point, right. but, um, for my business, for, for what I do here, you know, I have like 50 shops. It's some that's on my radar. Um, I'm, you know, I haven't had a lot of trouble with pricing, but like, this was like some that definitely, you know, I'd like to see. I, so I found a used one listed for 40. It's all open. It has some damage to a lot, some of the pieces and stuff. Right. I listed mine really high to see what happens. I put it as collectible rare you're not going to find this i mean it's the only one i can find online for sale right now so all right let's see if i can actually share this screen here this is totally really kind of crazy no, right. let's see if I, i've never done this before so let's see if i could do it without screwing up the whole show here um i guess it's sharing is it sharing everyone could you see yeah I can see. okay 
So it looks like this isn't exactly what you have, but it's pretty close. Like it's it's Windows 2.0, wow. and it's selling for three hundred and fifty nine dollars now. Um, now I got to figure out how to get it out of here. How do I'm I stop? Here? Just, oh, here we should, go. Uh, on the there. window down the bottom, yeah. There we go. I'm learning here on the fly, folks. Um, no. Honestly, here's what I would do. I would list it like for twelve hundred bucks. What? Yeah. I would for, for 200 so if you want to... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's the thing with vintage software is it's so rare to find it in sealed condition that you actually might get that much. But here's a good thing about putting it that high. You can always drop the price. Right, right. If you okay. put it for 200 bucks and it sells instantly, you're going to kick yourself for the next couple of days. <laughs> Let me... That's what it's listed for right now. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Yeah, you want to? Oh, and it hasn't it I'm, hasn't sold. No, but I'm gonna see what I just listed it like two days ago, so it hasn't sold right away. Okay, well, here's the I'm thing gonna, too: is I want to like, see what it's what kind of attention it's getting. Right, you're gonna it, it's it's definitely a long tail. It's a, yeah, it's a long tail item, but you're gonna get the right person that might pay that much for it. And like I said, if you're comfortable with two hundred dollars, that's fine. Yeah. But if it was mine, I would list it for way higher than that. All right, maybe I. I, I bought it for ten bucks. Um, yeah. Exactly. So it's got seventeen views and a watcher already in two days. Right. Um. I can probably dissect that a little bit more because I'm pretty sure you got good keywords and everything. Do you have sealed in the title somewhere? Um. Yeah. It, not in the title. I have it in the description. Okay. Put sealed. Oh, it's in the in, title too. Oh, perfect. Yeah. 1988 sealed. Yep. So new, sealed, and NOS should definitely be in the title okay. for sure. Maybe I need to add new then. Yeah, I think, I think it's full though. Like the so, I'd have to eliminate something to change it because it's because so, the title for it alone. Because I had to do like IBM personal system and stuff like that in there. So I was at a garage sale maybe three years ago, and a lady had like two Palm Pilots from the '90s that were sealed, uh -huh. and they wanted like 15 bucks for them, and I bought them because I thought they were cool. And then when I brought them home, there was no comps, no listings, no nothing. Um, some of the used ones weren't even going for that much. And I said, Oh, I'm just going to like list it for like 600 bucks, you know, like, mm -hmm. and they sold for like $500 each. So after that, I totally go high, low theory. Have you heard my high, low theory? I, I, I'm sure I have. It's probably a theory. I use a lot. I probably met, I met every, everyone does this, but I do it. I just call it the high, low theory. You always price high for stuff. That's like rare that you cannot find anything right, on yeah. because you can always bring the price down. Right. You can never bring the price up once it sells. So right. um, if you're comfortable selling that at 200 bucks, more power to you. No, but like I, I said, I, I appreciate your information so much. Cause that's, I thought I was going high at 200 because the used one is listed at 40. But it's open. It's goddamn it. So I'm not high. I'm not high enough on what you think. I'm willing to bet that there is less than a hundred of those sealed somewhere. So I, think right. I thought I, I think, think you're right. right. That's the thoughts that I had. Like, where are you gonna find this? So let me let me break it down <laughs> also because like I I have a very good track record of kind of forward thinking when it comes to reselling. I was a collector of video games in the nineties, like crazy. And, you know, I knew that eventually one day they were going to be the baseball cards of yesterday because, you know, with baseball cards, people threw them away. And that's why there were so much now the old ones. Um, I see technology stuff like that being collectible today, even in the future, there's going to be museums that would probably want that at some point. Like they're uh -huh. the, the people that bought those cell phones or those Palm pilots were from a museum for an electronic museum to put on display. So like some of that stuff is, is definitely worth uh, trying to get as much as you can okay. for. No, All right, I, so I appreciate the information and I, I agree with you. I just, you know, I, I just went and changed it. Sorry, Pokey World, Tommy. Sorry. I did change it. I, I'm going to take your advice. I agree with you totally. It's just a nervous <laughs> thing. You know, it's like, am I pricing it too high? And I guess it does. Why am I nervous? Right? Like, why am no. I nervous? What's the worst that you can, what can happen? I, Lower the price in three months or four months or whatever. Yeah, Pokey World says, or po is it Pokey? It's Pokey World. Pokey, yeah. Pokey. Quick, someone buy it before Jimmy raises the prices. I mean, here's the thing. We don't know. I'm right. saying that. I don't know. I'm saying if this was my thing personally, because I do feel that those, the like the original uh, Apple computer that Steve Jobs made in his, in his uh, garage with Steve Wozniak, yeah. those go for like, 
five hundred thousand dollars now. Wow. And they they did they made a pretty good amount of those things. And I mean they're really hard to find. Don't get me wrong. If you find one, it's very rare, very rare. Um, even the Apple II's now that they mass produce are, are are worth a ton of money now. But that kind of technology in the future, people are going to be um, uh, definitely looking at that. Okay, we took a little sidetrack. That's all right. Let me kind of. Oh, that was fun, though. I appreciate you. I oh appreciate yeah. Your, like you have a lot of knowledge. I see the stuff you sell, and I'm like blown away with some of the knowledge that you have. So I appreciate it. Well, I've been doing this for a long time, so it's like it's it's funny. It's like almost like second nature. So it, when you you you'll know exactly what I'm talking about is like you've learned so much in the last two years. I'm sure where you can go into estate sales and now see, oh my God, I missed that like a year ago, and now I know. And that's all it is about reselling. You're just learning. The more you learn, the more you earn. Okay, do you have any estate sale tips? Estate sale tips. Um, my first tip is. Because me and my wife love to go on the second day and the last day. I've been to estate sales. <laughs> they should give you 200 bucks right up for it. I've been to estate sales on the first day and then went back to the exact same estate sale on the last day and done better on the last day than the first day. Why? Because they're, they're clear. They're, they're, lo they're low in the prices, but also sometimes they're, some of these estate sales aren't very organized and they're pulling stuff from the garage that they found in a box on that was in there on the first day that no one ever found. And I found it like, I was like, this wasn't here on the, or maybe they're just bringing it in from somewhere else. I don't know, but I'm like, this was not here when I came the first day. So, um, yeah, my wife, she'll tell you, she loves digging into garages and into basements. Um, she's like the darker it is the better because then maybe someone missed it and she's got the flashlight out and everything. Um, so that's the first advice is go back. If it was a big sale with a lot of stuff that was like, you know, a garage that where they didn't empty out the boxes and stuff like that, go back, see if you can find something that you missed the first day. Um, and like, don't be afraid to look stuff up on your phone. I mean, I know when I was, when I was first selling, I'd be nervous to open up my phone in front of work, someone that worked there or someone else. Like Pfft. now I'm like, excuse me, can you look this up for me while I hold it? You know, like, don't be afraid to look stuff up while you're there at all. Do not be afraid of that. I do it. I look up stuff on my phone at yard sales, in thrift stores, and at the state sales without worrying about if someone's watching me or anything like that. Yeah, um, absolutely. And look for new stuff in the package. Always look up new. If it's new in the package and it's never been open, like I was talking about, scan it, look it up. You, you know, soap, weird stuff like that. <laughs> so yeah like old soap that they might not make anymore can be worth money so yeah you're absolutely right and you, you talk about soap uh one of the um one of the hidden treasures in estate sales is the bathroom especially if you can yep. find some perfumes and there's lots of different yep. things uh, a pro tip i'll give for everyone i did do a video on this a couple years ago is uh, vintage spray paint there's a lot of crazy um spray paint out there that's worth a ton of money if you can find some really good condition uh krylon stuff from the 80s and the 70s um, there's a lot of artists and collectors that buy that stuff and, and people think it's just junk. So that's another kind of thing to look out for, for sure. One of the cool things I found in the bathroom was a, um, uh, for a shaving, you know how the, the old school shit way to shave where you took the cup and you put the little bar of soap in the bottom. Oh, yep. I found a vintage, like old bar of, or the little cup that the little, whatever it was that you throw in the bottom of the cup to make the, the lather. And that thing sold for like 50 bucks or something like that. Yeah. Really Toy cool. Addict says she sold a sealed box of Tampax from the 60s for 75 bucks. Yep. Yep. That I wouldn't, that does not, yeah, that does not surprise me at all. Um, do you go to uh, flea markets or swap meets? No, I don't. I've been once. So we have a, we have, we have a big one here in Colorado and I've been once and I did okay. I should go back. Um, not my favorite place to go. Um, and I definitely don't go there to sell. Um, I did okay. It's the one that we have here is definitely mostly commercialized, you know, new, new stuff from wherever it came from. You have to walk past all that to get to the people that are actually selling from, you know, the, the, um, what are they called? The auctions. They buy the, the storage locker auction people that, and stuff like that. We have a lot of people that go to the thrift stores here and then take the stuff to the, uh, to the flea market over here as well. So. I've done okay there. I think the I did find a pretty good Lego set there once. 
that smelled like cigarettes and I had to spend a lot of time <laughs> cleaning it. I hate that. Kind right of off my Forrest Gump impression and up to, it smelled like cigarettes. Yeah. But it took me a while to get that smell out of it. Um, but I still did pretty good on that, but yeah, it's, it's I, I don't know a lot. Gotcha. I mean, one thing that I will say, cause I've been going to uh, swap meets they in, in the West coast here, they're called swap meets. And I guess in the oh. East coast, they're called flea markets and uh, whatever. I, 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 I grew up calling them flea markets. Yeah, exactly. So, um, uh, I've been going to those things since the nineties and it's, it seems like there's a lot of savvy people there now it used to be like going to like flea markets in the nineties was like going to a garage sale that a bunch of people are having a garage sale. Now there's a lot of vendors and there's a lot of savvy people that know what they're looking for in the onset of uh, the internet and eBay. And a lot of people are more savvy. So finding those hidden treasures at flea markets, you have to really know like a, a variety of, of yep. things to find treasures just like an estate sale you know so yeah yeah for sure that. so i was going to ask you if you had any flea market tips but i guess that question's going out the window <laughs> my tip to me is go go try it again <laughs> yeah there you go hey that's that's good you could definitely do that um it's funny because like i say like i don't really go to three mar flea markets anymore really much because I, I really don't find anything it's kind of like a waste of time for me but you never know when you're going to find that one picasso or something like yeah. that that's going to be sitting there that no one else is going to find um what was your biggest score or lucky find my lucky my favorite and luckiest find was a Sports specialties, the, um, Oakland or Los Angeles Raiders hat. It had the, it's the one where it looks like it's in cursive and it says Los, it had Los Angeles and then Raiders in cursive from the not, 90s, I believe. Um, and I paid a quarter for it at a yard sale. And it's funny because I, I had put it in my, you know, we call it the death pile. I put it in my death pile. Uh, you know, it's an old hat. I'll sell it eventually whenever I get time to it. And I was, Riding with one of my friends to a thrift store, and I just start decided to start looking up stuff that I knew I had in my death pile. <laughs> and I looked up that Los Angeles Raiders sports specialty script hat, and my jaw dropped. I was like, "This, that's a two hundred fifty dollar hat sitting in my in my garage right now." Yeah. Do you know why? Do you know why they're worth so much? I do. Oh, good. Would well, you want to tell the audience? Because I know too. Because Easy E from NWA wore it on a lot of the album covers and a lot of the music videos that NWA made. Bingo. Yeah. yeah. So it's funny how a lot of that kind of stuff has been popularized uh, through that kind of stuff. And there's there's some starter jackets that are kind of the same way too. But um, yeah, those hats, those Los Angeles Raiders, even the Kings. There's some Los Angeles Kings hats in yeah. those in that era that do well, but not as not as good as that particular uh, Raiders hat for sure. So I'm actually, let's give Jimmy a round of applause for knowing about that very unique, like weird, like not a lot of people would know that. Right. that. So good, good for you, dude. I like, thought it was, you know, I was thinking all oh, $50, $60 hat because I've sold script hats before. When I got home and looked it up and I was like, oh, holy smokes, man. That's not my biggest flip, but that's my favorite story to tell. I paid a quarter for that hat. I bought two hats for 50 cents at that sale. What's your biggest I, flip then? Um, I just recently picked up a vintage monochrome monitor and camera for an old RV. And it was so, like for an like a RV from the 80s or 70s or 80s back right. in the system. And it was a black and white camera with the long cable and the, and the monitor. And it was all new in the package, never even been used. So I bought it. I'm not gonna lie. I bought it from a little old lady at a yard sale whose husband never used it. Um, and she, I think I paid 25 bucks for it and I sold it for 700. So that's been wow. my biggest flip. So to date. Wow. That's actually a really, really good flip. All right. Here is oh I uh, no we'll get no we got the hardball questions coming up. I thought, <laughs> I thought this was a hardball question, but it's actually not. It's like, uh, what would be your dream find? Like if something that you would really wish that you would come across. I want to find um, oh, I'm gonna draw I'm gonna draw a blank just because I'm on here and uh that's all good. Transformer G1 Devastator. No, no. my favorite. He was the and I know his name by heart, but I just um the red and white jet. Oh, uh, Starscream. Um, no, it's not Starscream. I think Starscream is the actually deceptive. He was actually an Autobot. He was an Autobot. Right. Gotcha. The, 
any, um, jet, jet, fire, stream, jet, jet fire, fire, I think it is. Yeah. Jet fire. And I know it. I'm just like drawing a blink. No, it's all good. I want, because yeah. I want it for back here. I want a generation one jet fire with all, with everything and hopefully the box and everything. Now, will I find it in the wild? I doubt it, but even <laughs> if, you know, I've, I have a, I have some old toys, right? Here, some G one stuff that is in terrible, terrible shape, but I hang on to it. Like I'm like, it's going on the shelf behind me just because I want to have it. But that would be just for personal. Like that's what I want to find is a G one jet fire. Um, that's great. And then I have another, they call them grails, right? Like my, I want to find a, uh, What's the video game for PlayStation 2 or the original Xbox uh, that was based on the TV show? Why am I drawing a blank on everything? I don't know. Is it is it a was it is it a rare game or is it like a hard what's to find the, game? What's the, what's the cartoon TV show that had Bender in it? Bender. Oh, uh, Futurama. Yeah. So Futurama. See, I'm just I know What's that. Uh, PlayStation 2 and X, original Xbox Futurama. That's a very what? valuable game. Dude, I gotta look that one up. I didn't ever yeah, heard of that one. Um, that's a, so that's on my, that's my video game grail that I want to find. I've, I've found NCAA 14 like five times at this point. Um, so now my new one is Futurama for PlayStation 2 or the original Xbox. Yeah. That I want to get, yeah. Go ahead. That game's worth probably close to a couple hundred these days. Wow. Yeah, I know. It's the, it, I always tell people in my videos like to stay away from PlayStation 2 games and Xbox games, but I do leave that little caveat that you should look everything up because there are some rare games and every single system has You just a mentioned rare that in the last video and I almost put in the, the comments like, except for future role. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then you heard me say like, but look everything up. Yeah, yeah, look everything up. Yeah, yeah. I always have to disclose that because the thing is, yeah. I don't want anyone to be missing anything, and everyone should be looking up everything they find anyways, because that's how you learn. I always tell people that don't know video games, but buy them and sell them. Look, don't sell them in lots until you look up every single game. Yeah, uh, we have Lone Star Picker in the house. He says uh, in Fargo they sell a lot of wood chippers. Jimmy, do you make a lot of money from that place? For I guess when you. I guess when you were selling those in Fargo, did you sell a lot of stuff there? Or do you remember? I don't remember for sure, but we sold, we sold a decent amount of wood chip. We sold so many log splitters. Log splitters were the thing I sold. I sold. That's the thing I sold more than anything for a company. Log splitters. Right. When you said log splitters, I thought you were just talking about the little metal things that you hammer down. Like I didn't think no. it was like a big piece of machinery it's or something. Hydraulic. It's a gas engine. Hydraulic. Um, it had a big. They called it the wedge connected to a hydraulic cylinder that would push the wedge down a beam and you put the wood on the beam and it would just splits the wood right in half. Yeah, I got you. I could see how that saves time. It's like funny, like city folk like me, I'm right. like, no, I, I want to do, I want to do an ax and do it. But yeah. people that, people that actually a beard first, <laughs> <laughs> people that actually have fireplaces and actually do use that stuff. They're like, I don't, I'm going to save time. I don't, I don't got time for that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's the, here's the hardball question. Oh, here we go. You, you ready? Yep. What was your biggest mistake that you've made reselling? If you can remember. I know. Or if it, you even had one. And I've never told this story. This is oh, gonna, nice. This, this is, is going to be juicy. Breaking news. Everybody <laughs> tune in. I just, um, just before Halloween this year, I, uh, for free, I got a scream mask. A reseller that's on the two streets up from me that I know she's a reseller. And I hate to say she's not a very good one. Um, was having a yard sale, and the last two hours of her sale, she said everything is free. So me and my wife Whoa. jumped in the car, went two streets up, and I found a pink scream mask. And I put it, I listed it on eBay right away for eighty bucks, and it sold as soon as I pushed list. And I was like, okay, I know I made a mistake. So I followed that person that bought it from me. Uh, yeah, they sold that screen mask for nine hundred dollars. Whoa! Wow! Yeah, so the high, so, so the high low theory would have worked in that. The high, I should have put it on an auction because he did auction, and it had like, yeah, my wife knows the story. That's what she, <laughs> <laughs> and I've never, I've only told one person that story, um, and I was like, I was so disappointed in that for for like a week and a half. I was just like, ooh, I missed out, you know, um. But I should have done an auction. That was my biggest mistake. I should, because he did an auction and he had like forty something bids on it, and it was just it went through. And I was the same exact same, the exact same guy, same exact mask. Yeah, 
that's my biggest mistake by far as far as missing out and listing something and not using Chris's advice. <laughs> no, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I think failure is some of the best things that we can come across as like sellers and humans and just like, just, just the natural progression of things because you learn a lot. And in that situation, you probably learned way more than the loss, you know? So it's like, you know, now the next time you, now, you know, and so that's, you know, everything happens for a reason. You did make $80 off something that was free. It's free. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like, sure. You could have probably made another $800, but it's like, you know, now, you'd know, next time to kind of, take a little even got a message later on after it sold like a couple days later someone messaged me like is this do you still have this and i was like no it's sold he's like i would have given you three i would have gave you 300 bucks for it i was like i know (laughs) that's when you know you have something because like i i sold some uh exclusive disney stuff because my wife used to work at, at disney and uh people to this day are still they were like these like backpacks or whatever they're really exclusive yeah. and uh people to this day are still messaging me like and they were sold like a year ago yep. and, and i don't know how the hell they got my met my my information or whatever but they're still like hey do you have those disney backpacks and i'm like wait a minute that was like a year ago what are you talking about <laughs> now they're i think that we i think they were like retail for like i don't know 50 bucks and now they're worth probably 700 bucks a piece oh, and that's wow. why people are um, you know, like, Oh my God, you still have those. That's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> my next question is actually really funny. Now that I think, now that you just told that story, <laughs> you ready for the question? <laughs> I, I swear it's on hey, here. Man, I, did not, I, did, laugh. <laughs> I did not make this up and this is literally the next question. All right. What, what, what was something, <laughs> hold on. I got to get myself together here. <laughs> What was something you found that you thought was junk, but is worth a ton of money? <laughs> <laughs> That's on here. <laughs> oh, man. Well, like, mask some lady was throwing. Right now, uh, now, now it, to, oh, do you have a, do you have another thing that you could possibly be that, that, that was like something? Oh, well, no, actually, you know, the hat would be one, you know, like the, the Raiders hat would be one. Yeah, yeah. The scream hat would be one. Was there anything else that you can think of that was kind of like that? Me and my early on, me and my wife joke because I bought this, you know, when I was still selling clothes, I bought this like Woolrich, vintage Woolrich, but it literally looked like a, a front door mat, but it was a vest. I called you know, it when we bought it, I was like, I'm gonna buy this front door vest. What this is it though? It's a it was just a vest huh? that was all wool, but it had like a it looked like a front door mat. It looked like it should oh. say wool. Gotcha. <laughs> you know? A wool vest. I was like a, a wool vest? I was like a wool vest. Yeah, yeah right. so it, was, it had no sleeves. It was really heavy. Like it was and it had a pattern, looked like something like I said, that's the best way to describe it. Like it should have said welcome on it. <laughs> um and this sold right. I, yeah, I might have lost money on that one too because I, I don't even remember what I sold it for, but it sold instantly. Like I listed it and it was – my wife knows exactly the vest I'm talking about because I listed and I was like, this thing sold right away. <laughs> and we were just learning then, you know. Yeah, that's so, pretty um, crazy. And, and I would say like for anyone that's new to reselling, like literally look up everything because I can't tell you being in this business that I'm in right now – I can't tell you how many things that I've looked at it and literally said, this is junk and then look it up and literally be worth hundreds of dollars. So that's why I say, do not be afraid to be in a state zone, have your phone out looking stuff up. You Absolutely. That I, I would have lost out on so money if I didn't do that so much money, if I didn't do that, because there's so many times I'm like, really, this is worth this much. Okay. Well, let's put it in the bag. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, do you see any kind of trends in what you're selling? Like I said, like I don't, I don't think it's a trend, but like I don't think most people realize that toys out of the box. So toys out of the box do way better than I thought. But a lot of people are like, well, if it's not Masters of the Universe from the '80s or GI Joe or Transformers from the '80s, it's worthless. I sell more toys that came out in the 2000s for big dollars than I than I do old because I don't. First of all, I don't find the old toys nearly as much. But toys from like 2006, 2007, you, most of those you can't find anymore either. And people are buying them up like crazy. Like I I sell toys that are not vintage all the time and out of the box, no package, and people buy them like crazy. So I don't know if that's a trend, but I think it's just something that a lot of people don't realize. Like it, if it's a popular line 
from like 2006 and um, a lot of people want it, you know, it's going to sell on eBay. It's going to sell. Gotcha. Power Rangers are huge right now. I sell so much Power Rangers stuff. If I see Power Rangers, I'm buying. I bought a wrestling ring because I wanted the wrestling ring, and it was full of like these Power Ranger sabers and um, superchargers, these little cartridges that you can put into Power Ranger toys that make it make a different noise. Mm-hmm. I sold a saber with uh, with six of those chargers for hundred and fifty dollars. Wait, I think I saw that wrestling ring in one of your videos. Did you sell that wrestling ring for like a hundred bucks or something like 130 that? Hundred bucks, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. That ring full of Power Rangers toys was one of my best buys ever because my wife knows she was there when I bought it. I did pay forty dollars for it, but those Power Ranger toys sold for probably six or seven hundred dollars total because it was filled to the top with Power Ranger toys. So actually, this actually sparks a, a question in my mind that I just came up with right now. Um, I, I've been seeing a theme in your videos uh, lately about you. You keep saying like you're not into profit on this video game lot. Do yeah. you want to talk about that? Because I don't think uh, you probably mentioned it in a video, but do you want to talk about like how much you paid and like what did, what did you get? Because I always hear you saying you're not in the profit, but I always see you like saying you sold this for this and this. I'm like, right. what is he going to get into that profit and how much did he buy? I said, it was my, it was my second really, it's my biggest buy ever. Um, I don't want to call it a mistake. I'm learning a lot from it. I've sold a lot of video games. I wanted to see, I was like, I'm going to treat it like a pallet. And I'm, I, uh, so I spent $2,000 on all these games. Gotcha. The profit is in the games themselves. The consoles are going to get me my money back. And then all, and the hundreds of games that were in there. And there was a couple really high dollar games. I have one, I have two games sitting over here that should give me about $300 when they sell. They're just going to take a little bit longer because I'm going to wait out to get what they're worth. But I, you know, I got to do the math on it to see. I'm, I know I'm getting close to breaking even. Um, I still have some. Con- I, I got four Game Cubes and a bunch of Game Cube games. I've sold most of the Game Cube games already. All the ones that weren't scratched are already almost all sold. The ones that did have scratches, I had to test. Those are being listed tomorrow. So I got the four Game Cubes. I got four PlayStation and. Um, I did test these, you know, he, he had pictures of showing them working and I, he had a TV set up there to show me that they worked. Um, I got, I've already sold all four Nintendo, Super Nintendos. Um, I had, what else did I have? There's four regular Nintendos over there. And he was really honest. He said two of them don't work. They need new pins. Um, I got a Sega Genesis over there. I have a Sega Dreamcast over there with games still that I haven't listed. Um, uh, Nintendo 64 already sold. I have a stack of Nintendo 64 games. I have a stack of Super Nintendo games. I have a huge stack of regular Nintendo games that I still have to list. Um, my son's actually helping me test those. Um, <laughs> That's a mistake. <laughs> You're like you right. tell your kids, hey, hey, could you go and test these this video one, games at like five hours later? Yeah, this one game it works great now. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I love this game, Pac-Man. I've never heard of it. Like, it's it's amazing. <laughs> Five hours later. Right. <laughs> so one of my things that I know has to happen is I have to be willing to take the the less um, return on investment if I'm going to grow to where I want to grow. Not everything is going to be the $0.25 cent hat into 250 or the $20, $25 monitor into 700 You have, I have to try to buy stuff like this and let the let the RO like if I can turn 2000 and make a thousand dollars profit most companies most retail places would take that it's just you know learning I'm, I'm trying to learn that and be comfortable with that and so that's kind of where I'm at with this um, I know there's profit there I'm gonna work on I'm actually gonna work on a spreadsheet and see how close I am to the profit and get an idea of what I'm actually gonna make on it um, but it was, you know, if you want to call it a risk, I don't, so I'm like a risk that's going to make me a thousand dollars. Okay. Well, yeah, you, you, you actually bring up a good thing. And I swear I was thinking about this earlier today. Like you, when it comes to reselling, when you take risks, it's, you know, sometimes those can be home runs. Sometimes they're not. And yep. one of the things is if you buy a $2,000 lotto ticket and you don't lose, you just got a piece of paper right there. When you spend two thousand dollars on merchandise, you still have the merchandise, and you still can squeeze some dollars 
out of that stuff. And the video game stuff is not going to go away. Like people are right. still going to be buying that stuff till the end of time, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you have to take those calculated risks and you took a risk and sometimes they pay off big and sometimes they don't. And it seems like you're going to make your money at some point. It's going to yeah. be a little long tail, but I, I applaud you for at least doing that. There's a lot of people that are like, that wouldn't even do that. Like, well, oh, two thousand dollars, and 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 trust me, not everyone can do that. Yeah. But yeah. but you could scale that down. Like some people aren't willing to spend twenty dollars on like a T-shirt, or you know what I mean. This something similar to that. So yeah. in this business, you have to take risks, and not everything is going to be rainbow and sunshines. You're going to lose your ass sometimes mm -hmm. on stuff. I and agree. You gotta, yeah, and you just got to be ready for that. You got to be like, I'm. You know, I'm getting my big boy, big boy pants on. I know I'm going to lose my ass right here, but I, you know, it could be, it, it could still be worth it. So like I said, kudos right. to you. Man. I want to prepare myself for like, I, I thought of it as like, okay, people have bought pallets for that much and they didn't even really know what they were getting in that pallet of returns or whatever they're buying. Oh, I can't, I can't do pallets, man. That sounds yeah. like. So, I mean, that was the way I looked at it. I was like, this is my pallet. This is the first pallet I'm going to, you know, it's not a pallet. It's a, you know, a truck full of games. Um, I'm still going to try and see what happens. And I, I did enough math in my head to say, okay, there's definitely money there. How much is there is the question. Gotcha. Um, do you have any tips for new sellers that you can Don't, think of? It's, it's the first thing is as a reseller, there's so many different variables that makes it different. Everything. There's so many videos you can watch so many things you can learn. Just understand it's so different for everybody. If you're part-time, part-time resellers compared to full-time resellers, it's such a different story for them. You know, a return to me is not a big deal. Like, I don't like returns, but I'm like, I deal with it. It's part of business. I know it is. Where if you're a part-time reseller with 200 listings and you just sold something really big and now it's being returning, that affects them way more. And I understand that. So when I talk about returns are part of the business, for me, I get it why someone that's, part-time with a lower amount of listings that's they don't want it they don't want that to be part of their business um and they and they fight it but just be prepared for it to change if you decide to grow and you decide to full-time it, it changes a lot you have to have a different look at it and one of the biggest things i've always said is customer service is huge kill them with kindness i my customer service i'll i'll be tell my wife how mad I am, but the message of them is the nicest message in the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even though I'm like upset with the way the customer's acting, my message and my um, note to them is always nice and apologize. Don't personally apologize. I learned this. I don't remember who I learned this from, but I worked with, I worked in customer service and this lady used to always tell me, Jimmy, don't apologize. You don't apologize to those customers. And it made my job harder. I learned to apologize and understand what the customer's going through or what the buyer's going through and why they might be frustrated. I learned to make my apology based on that. Like, I am sorry that this package derived damage and that the carrier damaged it. Let's see what we can do to resolve it. They want to hear that. They want to hear that comfort. So learn customer service techniques and skills. It will help you immensely. That is some that was a really long answer. But. No, no, no. That was great. And I took a lot of from that uh, being in this whole thing myself. And uh, you did say something, you know, customer customer service is like really, really extremely important. But there was one thing you said in the beginning was that everyone's different. And you you really, really, really hit it on the head because there's probably a lot of new resellers that come into this and they look at all these videos and they see what's going on and they try to emulate people and they fail miserably. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand that like you have to take from what we provide as far as information and doing and making your own business out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I was doing the same thing with postcards. Like, you know, I've been doing this for like 30 plus years and I started to do stuff with postcards and I learned that like, look, I have to do it the way that works for me. So you're absolutely right. Like everyone's going to be different. Don't get frustrated. You got to just kind of take the lumps if you, yeah. you know, be, when you fail and then you have to move forward from there and just don't get discouraged. So, oh man, you, you really hit it on the head yeah. on that I, one. I've always had that attitude about like, We'll take what you get, but make it yours. That's so true. Like, because I've talked to people and like, we, I have friends in the reseller community that we take totally different approaches towards it 
but it works for both of us. The way I do it works for me, and the way they do it works for them. And you just have to know that. Like, you can't – there's no set way of doing this because – there's another thing. People that sell high dollar items, and that's all they sell is high dollar items. They look at things differently than I do as well. Absolutely. So, um, do you have any uh, tips on shipping? I know this is kind of like we just totally just took a totally like wide okay. turn here. <laughs> do you have any uh, tips on shipping? Yeah, my biggest tip for shipping is make sure you have either bubble mailer per bubble mailers that you purchased all different sizes and small boxes, all different sizes. Cause the word to me, the, one of the worst things that can happen is I, I can ship it first class, but I don't have the right package to put it in. So I'm going to throw it in a priority mailbox and pr pay priority mail prices because I wasn't prepared for this item. That is literally 15.5 ounces, you know, and it, it would have went first class, but I didn't have a box that it fit perfectly into. So I got to put it in a priority mailbox and pay excuse me, priority prices. So just be have all the boxes beforehand and, you know, ask your friends for boxes. If people that shop on Amazon, Dan, the answer man, he gives me boxes yeah. all the time. So just have boxes ready. That's, I, I, I mean, I know if it's, if you're a newer seller, there's a lot more to learn, but for someone that's been doing this for a little bit and is maybe struggling with shipping, uh, I, I have so many boxes over there. I buy boxes. I don't care. Because I'm not looking for a box. I'm not spending time going crazy trying to find a box. I know I got it on my shelf over there. You, you actually bring up a funny thing. And, and let me. I'm going to share my screen here for a second. I'm gonna actually going to move the camera. Hopefully, I don't ruin this. You brought actually a really good point. And I have a little whiteboard right there that has sizes of boxes. When I come across something that I'm like, I sell all the time, I write this dimension on there and I buy the box in like 50 or hundred of them yeah. because I love to have the boxes and you hit it right on the nail. When you said that it saves you so much time when you just have a box and it's ready to go, especially if you sell a ton of video games. Like I got the new, did you get the new eBay uh, bubble mailers that are good for video games? I didn't get any of the Christmas ones. Yeah. So this is the Christmas one. Yep. It, and I will say, you know, these things are super cheap, but I will say eBay had a little bit of a flaw in the design here because when you kind of go to close it, it doesn't really have a really great hinge on it. So it's like a real struggle to kind of to close. So oh. that's the only down part about this. But you get these free if you have a eBay store and yeah. you get well, you don't get them free, but you get a credit. Uh, for your eBay store. Do you, do you use any of the eBay uh, supplies? Yeah. So, so that's what I actually, I buy um, the bubble mailers and the tape through eBay. So that's where I, I get my bubble mailers and tape through there with the coupons. Um, I'm, I, I'm getting close to having to order some of the medium size ones now. So maybe I'll look into those. I don't know. By then I might have be too late by the time I get them for Christmas. Yeah. Well, here's the thing too, is like uh, the, one of the, the bubble mailers sold out like in summer or like in, yeah. In, the, in the beginning of the year, the bubble mailers were sold out. And that was the first time that ever happened. And I was like, oh, man. So, like, now I just stock up on the stuff that, you know, I really use. Like, the tape is, like, amazing. And it's great branding for eBay because it says eBay all over. It's, like, so yeah. smart to do. Great branding for you because you work with eBay, right? Like yeah, exactly. Here's the thing. It, it's weird because it's, like, it's, it's advertising for eBay. It's literally a write-off for them, too, because, in a way, it's, like, advertising and they're making money off that so there's a weird write-off for taxes on that it's like really like ebay's like so smart yeah. uh by doing that and like you could see that that store that sells those things they got like a million feedbacks already you know so like they're they're doing okay with that it's so funny what's tommy, your favorite oh tommy asked a question on that and just yeah. to make sure we answer that as long as you have a store you'll get a credit um the store the store level depend depends on how much you'll get right so Basic, okay, so there's like different uh, store levels. So you have to have a store. Um, yeah. It's just not a regular basic account. So the, the regular store gets $25 a quarter. If you have like a premium store, it's like $50. And if you have like the top rated store, it's $150 per quarter. That means that they basically give you that as a credit used to use towards those eBay shipping supplies. Right. And um, we use them. we use them all the time every time they come up. And, um, it's, it's really cool. And they have really good, they have really good size boxes. I mean, I, I have like a whole collection of them because we get so much yeah. of that stuff. And like, 
when they did the records, the record boxes, like I was like so I was like so happy that they did those because they have boxes for records and laser discs. Do you yeah. sell any laser discs? Do you do any laser disc stuff? I just sold a laser disc player. Um, I have laser discs right now. I've looked them up and I wasn't impressed with the comps, so I haven't listed them. Gotcha. Laser discs are, are very interesting uh, type of mm -hmm. uh, genre. So I guess I need to I need to relook them up. I mean, I have ba you know pop mainstream movies like. Well, I Top Gun. I have uh, hey, there's Sling Blade right there. See, there you go. Mm. That's, that's for you know, all time. So I kept that. So. <laughs> I like them for fried tater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I will say the difference between DVDs and uh, VHSs and laser discs is there. Um, some of the rarest laser discs are popular movies. So okay. it's like the opposite of what you've been trained to believe. Uh, the Matrix with Keanu Reeves, the laser oh. disc, um, goes for like two or $300 used. If what? you can find a sealed one of matrix, it's like 800 bucks. I guess we better look those up a little bit better. Honey. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the end of days, it's a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Same situation, a hundred bucks, 200 bucks loose. You know, I scanned like, I had a stack, like 12 of them where I scanned like four and I was like, yeah, these aren't. <laughs> yeah. So here, yeah. So for, here's the thing. It's like everything else. The majority of the stuff is not going to be worth much, but you're going to find some of those hidden gems. Uh, my tip to you for laser disc is sci-fi and horror do very well. Okay. And uh, music concerts for whatever reason, music concerts do very well. Um, okay. I sold like a sealed one, maybe last year for 150 bucks. Good. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. I'm so, going to look, through, I'm going to go through all of them. I got a stack of them over there still. Yeah, I absolutely. The player, the player sold pretty fast. Yeah, players are actually kind of hard to find now. I mean, they they sell pretty good because it's like one of those weird things. I don't know. Like laser discs are such a weird subject. Um, do you have any listing tips? I know that you have a whole system that you have down there in the the attic or the or the the um, what do you call it the basement. Um, do you have any listing tips? Um, not because again, everybody is like people that list on their phone. I don't know. I can't do it. I've tried my, <laughs> the same literally way. Tried oh my God. list on my phone and I'm like, I don't know you know how they do it. I don't even know. Um, so I find what, find what works for you. But the one thing I will say, if you are strictly on your phone, make sure you log into your computer and go into the seller overview in the hood and look things over because there are, th I know for a fact there's things you can do there. And you need to check there that you cannot see on your phone. So yeah. other than that, I mean, do whatever works for you, but make sure you're checking your overview and your on, on your computer every once in a while. You're, you're so never went. They didn't even know, and they were there was things there that got them in trouble because they weren't checking up on them. That's too funny. Yeah, like it's kind of funny that you're bringing that up because I tried doing listings on my phone once, and I'm like, how how the hell could anyone do this? <laughs> like and there's. And there's some sellers that just do it on their iPads and their iPhones, and that's all they do. And I'm like, I know. Wow. Yeah. My, so I opened a second store, and my wife, it's my wife's store, and it's going to be just loose action figures. And she's trying, we're trying to do it just on the phone upstairs, like, so we don't have to come down here and work. Man, how many times there's been some curse words set upstairs because of that app? Well, here, I have a theory on that, and why that is, is like the, the younger generation. Not it me. is more well no i mean dude like i'm 40 years I'm, old and i'm pretty sure you're 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 pushing 40 yeah i'm 44 there you go so like our generation grew up with desktops for listing and so like i i can't do the phone i can't do the ipad i just can't do it it's just my brain's not wired that way and i think my theory is from what i've observed is that the younger generation are more keen to doing that stuff on the phone and they, and they love it. They just, they, it's just a different way to do it. So whatever works, right. I did have one thought that popped in my head yep. on a big thing, especially if you don't want to deal with returns and you don't want to deal with difficult customers is be a hundred percent honest on the condition of the item you're listing. Don't try to get over on somebody. Don't try to not, Oh, I'm just going to, Hope they don't notice this. Like, make sure somehow, some way, be 100% accurate on the condition. Don't try to get over it. You, it will bite you eventually. If it doesn't bite you on the first time, eventually it will bite you. Yeah, there's actually a saying. It's called, uh, uh, it's like something like over promise or under promise and overproduce or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or, over deliver yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you want to, 
if you're selling books and it's in like new condition, maybe put it in like very good condition mm-hmm. uh, or if it's, yeah, exactly. So you always want to kind of do that. And you're absolutely right. Um, uh, po- Poji, po- I always want to say this wrong. It's like Poji po- po- world. It's, it's Tommy. We, you know, that's Tommy. Tommy. Tommy says uh phone is just better for seal. Pro- I think he's talking about the scanner, the barcode yeah, yeah. scanner that's on there. Right. which is really nice. And I tell a lot of our volunteers, if they're ever questioning like how much something is worth, you can easily go to the eBay app and scan the barcodes. And it's like a really, really good uh, um, thing. Uh, Toy Addict says, uh, I can't do the phone either. It drives me crazy. No, no, no. I hear you. My wife made a good point. List, uh-huh. oh, what, Leroy, that's Leroy. That's Leroy? Where yeah. Is it? Right here, Blood, Blood and Sweat. Great, great show. He does a lot. He, now he sells at the swap meet a lot. Yeah, so he probably knows. He knows how it is, and if he's been doing it long enough, he knows that like finding treasures there are few and far between. But then again, I'm talking about Southern California for me. Right. I don't know what it is in his area because, like you said, everyone's different. Every seller is going to have a different experience. Because I on Instagram, I see um, uh, what's his name, uh, Retro Junk eighty seven, or or right. there's a gentleman like that, and he's always finding amazing deals. <laughs> uh, of, on games and he's like in new hampshire or something like that so that to me that makes sense southern california you are rarely going to find video game deals that are like super amazing and crazy yeah um so my wife said and it's something that i think is very important i've i it's helped me a lot is try to list every day if you can i think it's this it's this yeah. uh, right here if you can list three four five things a day it will help you it helps the algorithm that you talked about um it definitely is i list Monday through Friday, every single day, I list at least five things. Some days I'll do 25, 30 things, depending on how the day is going. Um, but try to list every, at least Monday through Friday, try to list every day. No, yeah. you're absolutely right. And it's like more than the algorithm too. It's just getting your self uh, used to a routine and, and literally eBay is a numbers game. So the more you list, the more you're going to sell. Yeah. I mean, that's like, it's not brain surgery. People want to kind of dissect everything and, and kind of, uh, you know, really kind of look into the intricate parts of this business, but it's literally list as much as you can at a competitive price and you're going to make money. Like literally right. that's all it is. Yep. <laughs> I, sh- I should actually make a video one day. That's like, that's like the best tip or the, the top hundred tips for selling on eBay and just do that one tip. Like, just consistently <laughs> list at a good price and then end the video there like at the very end. <laughs> uh, do you have any inventory tips? Like what, how do you keep your inventory? Do you do the boxes with the numbers and stuff like that? Um, I do. I, I put letters on my shelves. So um, I, for smaller items, I put them in tubs. So like um, I have, let's say I have the J shelf and I have the J1 shelf. I have tubs on that shelf. So those tubs are labeled J1 tub one, J1 tub two. And then any, when I put it, the item in that sh- tub, I put it on the, the um, what's it called, the custom label. Um, so I just label my shelves and whatever shelf it goes onto, the custom label has that shelf. Um, I, I, I Originally, I just did it by category. I put toys on one shelf. I put electronics on another shelf. And that worked for a while. As, it's just as you grow, um, I definitely recommend organizing because, you know, I, it's funny because I hear a lot of, I've heard a lot, time is money, right? Time yep. is money, time is money. And then I've heard people that tell me they've used that saying time is money. And it's that same person has told me I spent 45 minutes looking for something <laughs> that, that was listed that I couldn't, and I finally found it in the bottom of a pile that I had over here. Whatever. Like organize your inventory to save that time that is money. Um, that's the biggest thing. Um, so if you, cause a lot of resellers don't organize it, they just have it laying around and when they sell it, they go look for it. Um, find some kind of way to organize it and organize it. It helps so much. It's the reason I'm able to do my videos. How I do right now It's part of my plan. Let's get this inventory organized so I can make videos of me pulling orders off the shelves. I think inventory is scrambling. Oh, absolutely. Cause I think, uh, I can't tell you how many times I've lost something and it's like, no matter how well you try to organize everything, you're going to lose something. It's like, it, it, it could be just a faulty like database entry. You know, you put J one instead of J two or, you know what I mean? It could be something as silly as that. Then you got to worry about clerical errors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so a pro tip, you will lose something and it will frustrate you, but at least if you're doing inventory systems in some way in your business, it'll save you a lot of time 
and yeah. you'll have less of those. Uh, I remember when I didn't have an inventory system and I had to dig through like boxes in uh, storage units trying to find stuff. That is ridiculous. You did not want to do that. Uh, I mean, it was bad enough when it was like, okay, the toy shelf is completely full from top to bottom and I sold a toy. There you go. We're looking through this entire toy shelf. So to po we got to get through this because uh, Poji, Poke World is wants to talk about Pokemons. All Pokemon right. cards, and I've seen that you sold a ton of that stuff. Every sh every episode, it seems like you've you're selling those cards. So I guess before we get into like what people should be looking for and all that kind of stuff, and I know that could be a whole video in itself. So if yeah. we can just make that brief for the audience, but uh, what was the deal? Did you buy a collection? And it looked like it had a bunch of multiples. Yeah, so I bought a collection, not this summer that just went by, but the summer before. Um, this guy had those big card boxes full of Pokemon cards. I paid $225 for two boxes and three binders of Pokemon cards. And at the time it wasn't the boom. So the card I, I lost cards that I sold for three, four hundred dollars are now selling for close to a thousand dollars. So I didn't do as good on them as I would have if I would have bought it right now. Um but I sold all the I, I I sold all the cards that were valuable, all the holographic and reverse holographic and the shinings. I sent out like four cards to be graded, and on those four cards alone, I think I made over seven hundred dollars profit on those four cards. Um, and all the holographic and reverse holographic cards that I had, I mean, it's thou I'm well into the probably over two three thousand dollars profit. And so these are, I still have a. A whole box over there of other cards that, that aren't special like the ones i'm selling now is this box right here they were all um team rocket first edition so they're all stamped oh, wow. first edition yeah they're all team rocket and they're all just the base you know the the basic cards or the commons or the uh even the rares you know not they're not holographic or reverse holographic or anything like that um so i had this whole box listed 660 cards i had it listed up for a thousand dollars forever i mean it two and two years later or a year and a half later i guess i was like this thing's just not i'm so pokemon cards are hot why isn't this box of cards selling so i was like you know what there's 666 cards here 660 cards here if i get a dollar per card that's 660 bucks <laughs> let's just list them because there are a lot of doubles anyways there's a lot of like some cards I have 15 of, you know, so I decided I broke down and decided to do it. I'm just going to list them um, individually and it's paid off big time. I mean, I'm selling cards daily. I did find this card in there. That's this, uh, dark oh, wow. Charizard first edition. Yeah. I, if I graded that and it got 10, I could probably get close to 800 bucks for it. I, I was going to ask you when you sent those four in, did you ever, did you get a 10 on any of those? Cause those yeah. are actually pretty rare. No kidding. Yeah. I got a 10 on a shining. I'm probably saying this wrong because I'm not a Pokemon expert. I, no, I, I hear you. Did, Neither am I. It was shining Celebi or Kalibi. Mm -hmm. I know what um, you're talking about. It's like a bird, like a, like a, it looks like a bird in a mixture of a bird and a flower. Mm -hmm. It was a shining one first. It was also a, not first edition, but it was a older one from the nine, like, like 1999 or something like that. Yeah. Um, and that graded at 10. That was the one I got the most for. I don't remember exactly what I got uh, for it. But. I actually have a really cool Pokemon video for anyone that wants to watch that. So if you just go to my channel and search Pokemon, I did a breakdown of like what to look out for, especially some of the older stuff. Because I used to I used to collect Pokemon cards in 2000 and everything. I didn't really have any of the crazy ones, but um, I, I did dabble in that a long time ago and it's kind of cool to see them coming around full circle i mean some of the, the sealed like first edition booster packs or booster boxes are hundred thousand dollar plus it's, it's actually ridiculous it reminds me of magic the gathering too you yeah. know I, I lived through that also and it, it's it, it's crazy to see some of those collectibles uh go for crazy money and i talk about this every once in a while in some of my shows is there's stuff that is out right now that you can buy at retail that 20 years from now are going to be worth a hundred thousand dollars, but it's, you don't know what it is. Um, that's the thing is, is, is people just don't know what it is. Uh, a lot of those were kind of consumables. And what I mean by that is people open the packs, they open the boxes, they played with the cards. Yeah. And so that's what makes a lot of those kind of rare and hard to find. And you can actually trace that back 
all the way to like baseball cards in the 50s is that's why there were so much as people's people use them throw them threw them around put them in spokes of bikes right. their, parents, their parents threw them away they didn't know it was going to be worth and then you can parallel all that down the generations like video games nintendo games are the same way you know they're not really consumables but i mean you know they didn't people really didn't think they were going to be worth a lot and they could have been thrown away and everything but uh nostalgia nostalgia i'm telling you nostalgia the common theme when you think about it is it all no, ties to nostalgia no, for sure definitely 100 percent. i agree totally um it's funny because th when i bought this collection the only thing i knew about pokemon cards is my kids wanted them when they were little <laughs> That's yeah I I too. but i learned so much from buying this collection i'm glad i obviously I made a lot of money off of it and i'm glad i did but i learned a lot about pokemon cards mine and, and you're right like and right now with a lot of people at home and there's you know they're looking for their, to improve their collections or whatever and that nostalgia they're like yeah i wish it was i wish it was a uh, hollow it's not it's just a regular first edition yeah. tommy was asking that it's kind of crazy to see like you know the the prices on some of those i guess like the holy grail is the shadowless charizard yeah. uh first edition from that first set yeah, you can buy a house if you have that yeah especially if it's in 10 it's as graded yeah. 10 it's actually kind of great you're buying a house with what you sold it for now i say uh from in in my business here at the american cancer society thrift shops we get in collections from time to time and they've i've never seen any like you know first edition some of the first sets and we've we get collections in, in every once in a while but that stuff is so rare. Like it's like even those transformers that you were talking about. I've been here for two years and I've not seen one collection of transformers come in here. I mean, even the newer ones. I mean, maybe every once in a while a newer one, but it, a lot of that stuff is is so hard to find now. I mean, I think we got a vintage Star Wars collection like a couple months ago. Um, but a lot of those old vintage toys are, are really, really hard to find. And uh, I used to go to garage sales in the nineties and I can tell you like crazy stories about just like He-Man figures, GI Joe figures, just like everything everywhere, like Nintendo stuff everywhere. And now that stuff is like, you can't find it. So it's, you got to learn about all the different kinds of things. All right, Jimmy, we've, we've done this for an hour and a half and oh my God, like, uh, this is the longest interview I've ever done, I think. And I think, uh, we had a lot of fun and we went over a lot of different things and um, I really appreciate your time coming and talking with us. And I definitely want to do this again, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, had a, I had a really good time. And uh, do you have any last, uh, oh, really quick, everyone. I'm going to put Jimmy's um, channel in the chat room right now. If you can go and follow him, for sure. Uh, go subscribe. He's trying to reach 1,000 um, subscribers. And he's going to get it in a, in, a, in a couple months, if not sooner than that. Um, and if you can do that, for sure, uh, Jimmy is an awesome guy. He knows a lot and his videos are very entertaining. And Jimmy, I will say, um, just from the stuff that I've witnessed and, and just the stuff that I've observed, you're going to do very well. Just keep doing what you're doing and uh, right. you, might, you might see your views. And I'm the same way. Like I don't get, I don't get as much views and you're going to, it's going to be a hard grind, but I think if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to catch on and, and you're going to get some, um, once you get that, once you get monetized, I think it's going to really jumpstart your uh, channel. So just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing great work, man. I appreciate it, man. I do appreciate that. Um, do you have any final words before we head out? I just want to thank you so much, man. I mean, I appreciate you uh, asking me to come. You know, we not asking, we talked about it. You, and you've been following my channel for for a while, like you said. And I see you comment. And I, and I just appreciate you uh, showing me that support and showing my channel that love, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, for sure. Like I said, you have a good head on your shoulders and you're going to go far and uh, thank your wife too, man. That's awesome that, uh, she's, she's a part of your journey also. And like I, I my wife and my kids, they, they really, uh, want nothing to do with reselling, you know, like, and, and it's kind of, it's funny cause it's just, that's some people are into it, but you know, if you have a, a partner or, or a kid or someone that's into it, definitely encourage them, uh, to learn. And that's how I learned, you know, everyone starts from somewhere. So Jimmy, appreciate it. Um, everyone go follow Jimmy, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Bye.